lost their lives in the last 60 days because of this scourge. And we thank you, Father, for the health care workers and all of those who support those team efforts to bring health and healing to all families that are impacted. Well, we pray for the families that are bereaved. And today, Father, we do take a moment and pause to remember the contributions of our dear Anne Edge, who has passed into eternity. Lord, we ask for your comfort for her family and all those that she touched and loved. We also pray tonight as we also dedicate and remember uh, Mr. Herman Bowman, who also made tremendous contributions to our community. And we thank you for the gift of his life. We also appreciate, Father, all of the people who work every day to ensure that our city is safe and protected. Thank you, Father, that community spread has not impacted more than it has in the Twin Counties. And help us to continue to remain safe and, Father, distant from each other physically, but together in love and the spirit. We ask for your guidance and wisdom. In your name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I'd like to ask the clerk to roll call. Council Member Nye. Here. Blackwell. Here. Joyner. Here. Walker. Here. Dautridge. Here. Bullock. Here. And Miller. Here. Okay, moves us to item number four on the agenda, which is the approval of the minutes of the regular scheduled meeting of the City Council held on April 13th, 2020. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Moved by uh, Joyner. Second. Second by uh, Knight. Is there any discussion? Being no discussion, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, by like sign. Matter is approved. Item number five is the consideration of the minutes of the regular scheduled committee of the whole meeting held April 13th, 2020. Uh, one, item one is time parking limits near in near event center for ad curve by consensus. The council authorized staff to place consideration of time to parking limits near the event center on the next city council agenda for formal consideration. Item two is the recommendation for public service awards. Cynthia Jones, by consensus, the council agreed that consideration of funding proposals be placed on the April 27, 2020 council agenda for formal consideration. And item three is closed session, uh, which was the personnel and attorney client privilege. Uh, the recommended action is to approve the minutes and the recommendations. Do you have a motion? So moved by uh, Knight, second by Blackwell. Uh, any discussion? There being none, then uh, please uh, approve by saying aye. Aye. All opposed by like sign. Matter carries. Item number six, community update by Madam Manager, Rochelle D. Small Town. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of council. Uh, today, we still would like to remind everyone that all commission and board meetings will continue to be canceled until the governor's executive order is lifted. In addition, neighborhood meetings, Citizens Academy, and the Rocky Mount Area Youth Council meetings also remain canceled. To actively encourage black youth to focus on being counted in the 2020 decennial census, despite the coronavirus COVID-19 global pandemic, the National Coalition on Black Civic Participation's Black Youth Vote Civic Leadership power building program and its unity diaspora coalition 2020 campaigns national and state-based partner organization launches hashtag hashtag count me black this week youth census 2020 week count me black youth week begins today and runs through friday may 1st 2020. while the week has been designated as such and you might not be a part of this group. If you have not done so, I encourage you to fill out and send in your 2020 census form. The census will determine funding for housing programs, schools, hospitals, economic development, and much more in our community. If you have questions, you can contact one of the city census outreach members at 252-972-1181 or visit 2020census.gov. 
per the city council's direction, there is a moratorium on all utility disconnections until further notice and late fees will not be assessed during this time. If you are struggling and need help with your bill, please contact the Business Services Center. We have sent letters to our state and federal delegation requesting their support for revenue stabilization funding for the city and shared our perspective on why the city should be included for assistance. We as uh, all of the other local governments in the state and nation have not received any good news on this front. However, with the support of our local government, government partners, we are pushing forward, hoping that we will receive stimulus support from both the state and federal governments. During this pandemic, I would like to remind you, if you can, stay home and know that the city of Rocky Mountain is working to ensure you continue to receive excellent municipal services. To stay informed of all the assistance available to our community, I encourage you to visit our website, at rockymountnc.gov or connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's all I have for you this evening. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So item seven is presentation and recognitions. This is going to be kind of tricky, but we're going to do our best. Uh, would it be better if I just walk down here and read it and then we can do the photo op? Yeah. of the City of Rocky Mountains. Whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for managing growth and sustainable development, revitalizing neighborhoods, fostering local pride and maintaining community character while enhancing livability, and whereas 2020 marks the 54th anniversary of the signing of the National Preservation Act, which established the legal framework and incentives to preserve the nation's heritage, and Whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, both urban and rural, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds. And whereas it is important to celebrate the role of history in our lives and the contributions made by dedicated individuals in helping to preserve the tangible aspects of the heritage that has shaped us as a people. Now, therefore, I, C. Saunders Robertson, Jr., Mayor of the City of Rocky Mountain, do hereby proclaim May 2020 as Preservation Month in the City of Rocky Mountain and call upon all the citizens of the City of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, to join their fellow citizens across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special observance. <laughs> <laughs> the proclamation of the city of Rocky Mountains, whereas Kids to Parks Day was organized and launched by the National Park Trust and is held annually on the third Saturday in May, and whereas May 16th, 2020 will be the 10th national celebration of Kids to Parks Day. And whereas Kids to Parks Day empowers kids and encourages families to get outdoors and visit America's parks, public lands, and waters, and whereas we should encourage children to lead a more active lifestyle to combat issues of childhood obesity, diabetes, mellitus, hypertension, and high cholesterol, and whereas Kids to Parks Day is open to all children and adults across the country to encourage a large and diverse group of participants. And whereas Kids to Parks Day will broaden children's appreciation for nature and the outdoors. Now therefore, I see Saunders Robertson, Jr., Mayor of the City of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, to hereby proclaim May 16, 2020, as Kids to Parks Day, 
in the city of Rocky Mountain and call upon all the citizens of the city of Rocky Mountain, North Carolina to join their fellow citizens across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special observance. In witness thereof, I have set my hand to the seal on this 27th day of April. of the city of Rocky Mount. Whereas public works is an honorable profession involving a variety of challenging and rewarding careers essential to efficient and effective operation of government, and whereas the efficiency of the dedicated and skilled personnel staffing the public works and water resources departments are influenced by their attitude and understanding of the importance of the work that they perform, and whereas these men and women contribute considerably to the quality of life for the citizens they serve. Their commitment to excellence and the variety of skills are an invaluable resource for providing the various services expected by our citizens. And whereas the public works infrastructure, facilities, and services are of vital importance to sustainable communities and to the health, safety, and well-being of the people of the city of Rocky Mount to help our communities grow and prosper. And whereas these public works facilities and services could not be provided to the community without the dedicated efforts and unwavering commitment of the public works and water resources professionals responsible for planning, uh, designing, building, operating, maintaining, and managing the transportation network, the stormwater system, the water supply, the water and wastewater treatment plants, the water and wastewater distribution and collection systems, maintenance of the city's motor vehicles and equipment fleet, and the delivery of solid waste services, which are essential to the services for our citizens. Whereas the Public Works Week strives to inform all citizens about the quality of people and government who work tirelessly every day to strengthen the bond that keeps us all connected, their commitment to high ethical standards and the value of the services they perform, to encourage excellence among public employees, and to promote interest in civil service careers. And whereas this year's theme, the rhythm of public works speaks to the essential nature of public works services and the support of everyday quality of life. Now, therefore, I see Saunders Robertson, Jr., Mayor of the City of Rocky Mount, hereby proclaim the week of May 17th through the 23rd, 2020, as Public Works Week in the City of Rocky Mount. Let's do it this way. Yeah. All right, proclamation of the city of Rocky Mountains. Whereas the 69th observance of the National Day of Prayer will be held on Thursday, May 7, 2020, with the theme, Pray God's Glory Across the Earth, based on Habakkuk 2.14, and whereas a National Day of Prayer has been part of our national heritage since it was declared by the First Continental Congress in 1775, and the United States Congress in 1952 approved as a joint resolution that the President shall sit aside and proclaim a suitable day each year, other than a Sunday, as a national day of prayer, on which the people of the United States may turn to God in prayer and meditation at churches, in groups, and as individuals. And whereas the United States Congress, in 1988, by public law 100-307, as amended, established an act to provide for setting aside the first Thursday in May as the date on which the national day of prayer is celebrated. And, whereas... Leaders and citizens of our community, cities, states, and nation are afforded the privilege of prayer with the joy of seeking divine guidance, strength, protection, and comfort from Almighty God. And whereas recognizing the love of God, we citizens of the city of Rocky Mount, North Carolina, now more than ever during this national COVID-19 pandemic, treasure the freedom to gather in prayer, exercising reliance on God's power in the face of challenges and threats, asking for his blessing on every individual in our city, 
this community, state, and nation. Now, therefore, I, C. Saunders Robertson, Jr., Mayor of the City of Rocky Mount, do hereby proclaim May 7, 2020, as a day of prayer in the City of Rocky Mount and commend its observance to all citizens. Okay, item 8 brings us petitions to be received from the public. Please note the uh, complete sign, citizen sign-in sheet and provide a security officer prior to speaking. Please limit the presentation to three minutes and time will be monitored. You'll state your name and address. That would be helpful. Thank you, sir. Tom Harris, 801 Joshua Clay Drive, Rocky Mountain. I reside in Ward 6. I come today regarding a couple of items. One, regarding the budget process that the newspaper uh, had in their paper uh, recently, as well as outlined in item number 11 on today's agenda. I want to read what the, uh, the newspaper quote uh, wrote, and I quote, Prior to the approval of the budget, a copy of the proposed budget has to be made available for public inspection during normal, or during normal business hours at the clerk's office. Uh, I would just like to uh, find out if a date or dates have already been determined when uh, such information would be made available at the clerk's office. City Manager? Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll discuss that when that agenda item comes up. But will uh, there be sufficient information for the public to have such opportunities to personally make an appointment? to review the information? Uh, we won't review it publicly with any individual. What typically happens is that copies of the budget are made available in uh, public places like the library. Uh, the clerk's <coughs> office certainly will have one. And, and it will be also online. I know with today's environment, uh, trying to have that information available, we got to adhere to various rules and policies. Thank you. Thank you. I also would like to ask regarding the uh, budget. If the operations of the Rocky Mountain Event Center are going to be clearly itemized in a format that can easily be reviewed. If you recall back in January this year, I came to you about my concern for the fiscal year-end report, June 30th, 2019, that the operations of the Rocky Mountain Event Center were blended. I hope that the budget will be uh, segregated so that we all can see uh, the Rocky Mountain Event Center. And I hope the, uh, the audit report for June 30th, 2020 will also not be blended but have a separate notation. Last but not least, when will we be able to view live broadcasts on local TV. Uh, I just received uh, the information uh, about the uh, uh, proposal from the staff. I haven't had a chance to review it myself. So the process will be I will review it and then I will pass it on to the City Council for their consideration. Two months, three months, Possibly earlier? The, nobody's required to answer, right. um, but just want to let you know, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's my last petition, unless, okay, last petition. Item 9 is consideration of the minutes and recommendations from a regular scheduled planning board meeting held March 10th, 2020. Uh, overview of requests and recommendation by the Director of Development, Development Services or his designee. So this public hearing is relative to the following rezoning requests recommended for approval 
and found in compliance with the comprehensive plan by the planning board. The request by William Carter Keller to rezone plus or minus 12.62 acres located on the corner of River Drive and Carr Street from R10 and I1 to R-6MFA. Well, this is deferred from the April 13th, 2020 agenda. So this time I'll open up the public hearing. Do we have a presentation on the, yeah. I'll just uh, <clears throat> elaborate a little bit more um, than what's on there. Like you said, 12.62 acres, uh, corner of River Drive and Car Street, uh, split zone R10 and I1, uh, which is your industrial to R6 MFA. Uh, planning board met in uh, March and uh, recommended uh, a unanimous approval. Um, to give you another sort of summary, the, the proposed development there is a 60-bed assisted living facility um, and of course through approval and then construction review all our stormwater sewer erosion control development regulations will be addressed before construction are there any questions question yes sir council bullock since several of you both are new to our city do you feel, do you guys feel okay and safe with the flood situation in that particular area? In that particular area, yeah, you're right. There, there are some, uh, there's some flooding, uh, flood zones uh, closer to the Sunset Park um, side. But uh, if you're familiar, we uh, just a reminder, we adopted uh, uh, new state flood regulations this past year. So as this comes through, we're going to make sure that elevation certificates and, and all that's uh, in place. Um, and as far as access, making sure you know, if, if one site, uh, this uh, one side of the site is subject to flooding, making sure there's access uh, both sides in case of an emergency. So we'll handle that all through our development review process. Thank you. Question. Yes, sir, Council Royal. Um, so. Has the, neighbor, have, has the neighborhood around that area or the neighborhoods around that area been included yet or where is their input in that process? I know in times past there have been objections to elder care uh, being provided in those communities so I'm really excited to see that there's been a change of heart um, for a 60 bed facility being introduced. And also can you also talk about parking Elements. Well, I'll, 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 if you don't mind, where, where is the entrance going to be? Off River Road or off Car or somewhere else? The entrance, uh, if I believe correctly, um, Harris, Harris Street. Um, Harris Street will be the alternative. River Road will be the main, but Harris will be an alternative. So yeah, that that more northern uh, west uh, western side is more prone. But uh, to Councilman Blackwell, answer your question, um, sent notice out, uh, and I, I don't know for sure if, if the applicants are, are reached out to the, to the neighborhood groups, but uh, usually they are notified, and we didn't have anybody uh, come to the planning board or, or contact us uh, with any negative feedback or anything else. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm personally happy to mm -hmm. see that we have uh, more institutions like that in our communities. I'm excited about um, an institution like that being more in our historic uh, communities and shows all of us that uh, all communities are postured for all types of growth. And at the appropriate time, Mr. Mayor, mm -hmm. I'd be happy to make a motion to that sure. at the appropriate time. Thank you. Hello, uh, Councilman. Um, yes, that was good. Same question. Reference to was there any opposition from citizens in that area for the historic preservation? Okay. I'll wait. Well, while we wait on that, um, so assisted living requires a certificate of need, approval by the, the Department of Health and Human Services, ultimately DFS. 
in the state of North Carolina. Am I assuming that a certificate of need has been issued, or is this a preliminary uh, gesture to make sure that land that's being optioned could be used for the development of an ALF? Yeah, I would, I would speculate that they're attempting to get this through this hurdle first, or they've done it simultaneously. I haven't heard any otherwise. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, just the same as uh, Councilman Blackwell mentioned about uh, there's no citizen opposition. Um, no opposition for the historic preservation uh, for the Falls Road Neighborhood Association. Um, I know almost 20 years ago, 23 years ago, uh, when I was not on the council, I petitioned this planning board and council for the adult daycare on Falls Road, and it was uh, the neighbors were adamant against anything from bed and breakfast, adult daycare, group homes, family care homes, child care centers, uh, etc., etc. Uh, even went too far as a lawsuit and went up to the Court of Appeal, correct, yeah. And so uh, I'm very well pleased, almost 23 years uh, now, that we're moving in the direction of uh, accepting uh, institutional care for our uh, population. And so, uh, if Mr. Blackwell will make the motion, I'll be glad to second the motion. It, it shows me that uh, Rocky Mount has progressed uh, in moving uh, towards the city on the rise. Thank you. So, do you have no members of the public who want to comment on this project? That's correct. Okay. With that, I will receive a, a, a motion from Councilman Blackwell. I move to approve uh, this request. Second. Second by the night. Um, is there any need for additional discussion on this matter? Uh, okay. I'm sorry, is that uh, Councilman Miller? Oh, I did not comment. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. All right, that, that being said, all in favor, if you would indicate by saying aye. Aye. Uh, all opposed aye. by saying sign. Okay, motion carries. Uh, item 10 is consideration of tax releases and or refunds. Schedule A, are taxes under $100 approved for release and or refund by the city manager. And Schedule B, are taxes over $100 recommended for release and or refund by the city council. Recommended action is to acknowledge receipt of report from the city manager of Schedule A, taxes approved for release and or refund, and two, approved release and or refund of taxes listed on Schedule B. So move second. Moved by uh, Mike, seconded by Blackwell. Is there a need for discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Okay, item 11 is the consideration of the fiscal year 2021 budget review works work session schedule. Uh, what is proposed is that Wednesday, May 6, 2021 through 2025, uh, proposed CIP document dis distributed to the city council. You know, city manager, it might be better if you walk us through this and it's your schedule and I'm I clear all the dates, but you might you might be able to provide texture other than what I would do. Okay. Is Ken out there by the chance? Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I'll ask um, Ken Hunter, who is our budget and evaluation manager, to come in. Ken um, works very tirelessly on preparing the budget uh, for council's consideration, so I certainly want him to review the schedule with you. Thank you and good afternoon. Uh, the budget review schedule uh, that you have before you is pretty similar to the budget reviews that we've done in the past in terms of the number of sessions and, and their scheduling. Uh, we do work with the fact that typically when we present the budget, it's typically in late, in mid to late May, so we have to work around the Memorial Day um, observance. Uh, on the 6th of May, uh, you will receive the proposed CIP document. That will be distributed uh, electronically or in paper form to members of council. 
and we plan to review that on May 11th as part of the committee of the whole meeting. And we do this, of course, in advance of the budget to provide an idea of what our capital plan is for each year. The budget document, the proposed budget document, will be distributed to City Council on Thursday, May 21st. And again, that will be done electronically or in physical form. On Thursday, May 28th, we have planned that a presentation uh, in the Council Chambers will be made uh, of the City Manager proposed budget for fiscal year 2021 and, if necessary, possible work session that will take place at 4 p.m. And that is one week after the budget document is uh, submitted to you uh, for review. Subsequent work sessions are also scheduled for Monday, June 1st, Tuesday, June 2nd, Thursday, June 3rd, I mean, sorry, Thursday, June 4th, and Monday, June 8th, if necessary. Uh, I'm sorry, Wednesday, June 10th, if necessary. My apologies. Uh, the public hearing on the budget is scheduled for Monday, June 8th, and this is required by general statute that there be a public hearing during a regular called meeting of council. As of now, we anticipate the adoption of the budget to taking place during the council meeting on Monday, June 22nd. Are there any questions for uh, Mr. Hunter? Yes, Council. We all know it's for Mr. Hunter, our <coughs> manager, but being new to the city council, and it's my understanding, since a lot of questions come up from city council, and and a lot of the input from city council comes during the retreat. Obviously, we the retreat was canceled. What opportunity um, do we have to, to provide for that? I haven't been contacted. I don't know if a fellow council members have been contacted or made the initiative to contact. But um, how, how is that going to work in, in, or am I understanding the whole budget process incorrectly? If I'm, if I'm understanding um, your question, you're, you're absolutely correct. The retreat was canceled and that certainly would have been an opportunity uh, to hear from council in terms of initiatives, if, if there are any. Oh, yes. So, so at this point, what we're relying on is um, really feedback um, throughout the year uh, from both the staff and myself in terms of a proposed budget. The city manager's budget is a proposed recommended budget. And so that's why you will see uh, in the schedule at least four opportunities and maybe even more for council to provide um, their input because after I present the budget to you it becomes your budget and uh, so that's how we're we're managing that if there is something in particular that you have a concern about then uh, certainly I would appreciate hearing that uh, we're getting close now to balancing the budget so that we can keep the schedule but if there's anything in particular that you have a concern about or want to see, um, I would ask that you share that with me as quickly as you possibly can. Madam Manager? Yes, yes ma'am. In this uh, budget work session, for those of us who are participating remotely, will these sessions be handled in the same way I'm hearing feedback? Yes, uh, yes it would, right. And of course, um, this is, you know, in the month of June, we're not quite sure where we might be uh, in terms of social distancing and, and like. But if we're still under the same uh, orders as we are today, or if it's council's pleasure, then we would conduct those uh, work sessions here in council chamber, which would then allow uh, remote uh, conversations between members of council who want to uh, provide their input remotely so that the remaining council could, uh, could hear that input as well. A secondary question. Given that the city manager and the various department heads normally prepare their remarks for these budget sessions ahead of time and deliver them at the work sessions, would those remarks be prepared, maybe even videotaped and distributed ahead of them time so that we would have time to review them and consider them in order to formulate the questions that we want to ask? Uh, that, that has really gone back and forth. Um, you, you might recall my very first budget uh, that I presented to the City Council was presented in chambers and um, very openly. 
And uh, subsequent to that, we went back to the way it had been done previously, which has been in small group discussions. So however the council would like to receive that information, you know, we're certainly happy, uh, you know, to provide that. So thank you. I just want to be sure that we have adequate time to reflect on presentations by yourself and the department here. It's before we're at the point of saying yay or nay, I have no concern, and sir. Right, well, I, I do want to remind you that the department heads won't be making the presentation of the budget. Uh, I will make the presentation of the budget, and between Ken and I, we'll answer any questions you might have. But we've tried to space out the uh, sessions, particularly from the time that you actually receive the budget. You won't uh, really be called to um, discuss the, bu the budget until some week, a week, at least a week later. So we're hoping that that provides you um, adequate time. And then uh, starting on June 1st, you'll you, you will have an opportunity to have the council uh, work session. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And, and I would also add that um, I certainly will be available um, to, we to meet with any member of council about anything that's in the budget uh, outside of the uh, work sessions. I had a follow up to my question. Go ahead. Um, as, as we heard during our one speaker today, will this be made, um, will this be um, posted to our website when we receive it, or when is it going to be posted to our website so that citizens can review it? Once, once we distribute the uh, budget to the council, you know, that, that is the first and foremost uh, step here. We won't uh, post it simultaneously. I want to make sure that the council has that budget before it becomes a public document. So um, soon thereafter, uh, it will be posted uh, to the website as well as placed in the library. And we will also have a copy in the um, city manager's office and budget and evaluation um, uh, office as well. So as we sit now, is the library even open? As we sit today, is the library even open? I think it's closed, isn't it? I'm not sure. I, you know, again, we, we are anticipating that some of these places will be open. If they're not open, then we'll have to rely on the online version of the budget. But, but typically, that's... That's where it is. Any other questions for uh, Madam Manager? And I'll entertain a motion to uh, consider and uh, approve the budget review work session schedule. So moved. Moved by uh, Councilman Joyner. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilman Knight. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Item 11. Loan passes. Uh, item 12 is consideration of resolutions honoring and remembering the lives well lived of Herman, Herman Boone and Benjamin Mayo Body Sr. I uh, do have a motion to adopt the So moved so move by Daughters and second Joiner. Is there a need for discussion? Being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Aye. So I'm going to read these into the record, if that's okay with everybody. I think it would just be a nice touch. Um, the resolution honoring a life well lived and remembering Herman Boone. Whereas the legendary high school football coach and the inspiration for the movie, Remember the Titans passed away in his home in Alexandria, Virginia, at the age of 84 years old on Wednesday, December 18, 2019. And whereas Herman Boone, known in North Carolina as Ike, was born on October 28, 1935, to his parents, Frank and Daisy Boone, and was one of 12 children. And whereas Herman Boone until attended Abraham Lincoln Elementary School and went on to graduate from Booker T. Washington High School in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina, in 1954, he was an outstanding athlete, and his desire to excel took him to North Carolina College in Durham, North Carolina, which later became North Carolina Central University where he received his Bachelor of Arts and Master's Degree in 1958. Whereas Herman Boone's teaching career took him to Luther H. Foster High School in Blackstone, Virginia, 
1958, where he coached football, basketball, and baseball. It was in Blackstone, Virginia, that he met and married his wife, Carol. Whereas in 1961, Herman Boone returned to his home state of North Carolina to continue his teaching and coaching career at E.J. Hayes High School in Williamston, where his football teams amassed an astounding record in a nine-year period of 99 wins and eight losses, and was recognized in 1966 by Celestic Coaches Magazine as the number one football team in America. And whereas in 1969, Herman Boone resigned from his position after being informed by Williamston School Board that the town of Williamston was not ready for a black head coach. In accepting the role of assistant football coach at T.C. Williams High School in Alexandria, Virginia. And whereas the city of Alexandria, Virginia integrated the school system in 1971 and appointed Herman Boone as its first consolidated football coach over a legendary white coach with several years seniority and a steadfast following. It was here that he pulled together and solidified a diverse coaching staff and unfocused group of young boys in the most powerful football team in the state of Virginia, leading the team to a 13-0 record, winning the state championship, and earning a number two national ranking. Whereas this extraordinary football season at T.C. Williams High School was the basis for the 2000 award-winning film, Remember the Titans, in which Herman Boone was portrayed by Denzel Washington. And whereas Herman Boone was a motivator of young people of all races, and as a teacher and retired football coach, was a true symbol of social transformation. And whereas the mayor and the city council and the city of Rocky Mount were desirous of honoring the memory of Herman Boone and commemorating the recognition he brought to the city of Rocky Mount. Now therefore, now therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and city council of the city of Rocky Mount hereby honor the life, memory, and accomplishments of Herman Boone and share the loss felt by his wife, children, family, and friends and recognize the life of Herman Boone as a life well lived. And be it further resolved that this resolution shall spread upon the pages of the minutes of this, uh, of this proceeding and a copy shall be forwarded to the Boone family, adopted this 27th day of April 2020. Resolution honoring the life well lived and remembering Benjamin Mayo Body Sr. Whereas entrepreneur and philanthropist Benjamin Mayo Body Sr. passed away peacefully at his home at the age of 90 years old on Tuesday evening, March 31st, 2020. And whereas Benjamin Mayo Body Sr. was born December 16, 1929, at his beloved Rose Hill Plantation in Nash County, North Carolina, to his parents, Nicholas Bunn Body Sr. and Lucy Verlu. Valorette, Valorette Mayo, Mayo Body, and whereas prior to distinguishing himself as a giant the family owned Body Knoll Enterprises, the largest franchise of Hardy's restaurants, Benjamin Mayo Body Sr. graduated from Rocky Mountain Senior High School in 1948, completed a postgraduate year at the St. James School in Hagerstown, Maryland, and then attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. And whereas Benjamin Mayo Body Sr. was a faithful Christian, a lifetime member of First Presbyterian Church of Rocky Mount, where he served as a deacon and elder, and whereas Benjamin Mayo Body was a co-founder of Body Knoll Enterprises, which currently operates nearly 350 Hardy's restaurants, uh, E&E, land and development, and other ventures, whereas Benjamin Mayo Body Sr. served as President CEO of Body Knoll Enterprises for many years before serving the last 25 years of his life as Chairman of the Board. And whereas Benjamin Mayo Body Sr. was an active and contributing member of his community throughout life, serving on numerous boards. The Boy Scouts of America renamed their Camp Bonner on the Pamlico River as Camp Body in honor of Mr. Body and his brother Nick, in appreciation of the loyal support and dedication provided to the scouting program. And whereas Benjamin Mayo Body Sr. was the recipient of the 2014 Jupiter Award for Moorhead Planetarium and Science Center, which recognizes outstanding contributions to science education in North Carolina. Throughout the sponsorship of field trips and other educational activities, Mr. Body provided enrichment opportunities for thousands of North Carolina school children. And whereas Benjamin Mayo Body possessed those rare and tangible qualities of leadership, courage, and compassion that generated admiration, he will be greatly missed. And whereas the mayor and city council of Rocky Mount are desirous of honoring the memory of Benjamin Mayo Body Sr. and commemorating the recognition he brought to the city of Rocky Mount. Now therefore be it resolved that the Mayor and City Council of the City of Rocky Mount 
Hereby honor the life and memory of Benjamin Mayo by senior and, sincere, and send sincere sympathy and condolences to the body family and his many friends. And be it further resolved that this resolution shall be spread upon the pages of the minutes of this proceeding, and a copy shall be forwarded to the body family, adopted this 27th day of April 2020. Please just to item 13, which is consideration for the fiscal year 2019-2020, Public Service Awards, approximately $84,144. Presentation of the Committee of the Whole was made on April 13, 2020. Um, the United Community Ministries uh, proposed to be allocated to $7,000. The Rocky Mount, Edgecombe, CDC, $30,000. The Boys and Girls Club of the Tar River Region, $30,000. The Ripple Effects, $70,144. The recommendation is to approve the funding request, and I don't know if no, Madam Manager, if you have um, somebody who wants to make an additional presentation. No, sir. We will entertain the motion. Second. Moved by Knight, second by Blackwell. Is there a need for discussion? Yes. All right. Uh, Councilman Blackwell? Mm -hmm. I mean, not me. Dalton. Yes, sir. Dalton. Um, Madam Manager, I emailed earlier last week, or late last week, I think, and requested if there were any, if all these entities were good with the, um, with the city up to date on everything. Yes, sir, and I responded to your email and indicated that they are. Oh, I, I thought the email stated that you weren't sure and you get back to us. No, I actually did say that they are all in good standing. And back in 2018, this council was aware that I sent, in that email that I sent, um, there was a presentation that was taken off of the um, Committee of the Whole in 2018 and actually attended. Um, but it was taken off and the purpose was to establish a policy ensuring an accountable objective results oriented and fair process for submitting, reviewing, and approving nonprofit agencies funding requests including all contractual agreements. I think that needs to be put back uh, on the agenda and we need to discuss it and talk about it because I'm not so sure that was done in this situation. No, it wasn't because uh, as you noted in 2018 that matter was tabled. But it's still a good policy to do that. We've got to be fair and equitable to everybody, including nonprofits. Um, the and then I'm, I'm going to move over to specific on April 8th, um, uh, 2019, which is about a year ago. The city attorney gave reports around the tax credits and unwinding of the tax credits for the Douglas block. Subsequently. The Rocky Mountain Edgecombe CDC received four hundred fifty thousand dollars. They received. We conveyed. We, the city, conveyed a vacant lot on East Thomas Street. In that, um, within thirty months of the date deed was delivered, um, there was supposed to be a building permit. Construction would begin with eighteen months of the building permit. And to my knowledge, that has not been done. So, which leads into the question I had earlier. There. You know, there's some things that need to be, that are due to the city, which I think is the land because it was deed, um, deeded for a, it was contingency on that. And I, to my knowledge, nothing has been done on that property as of yet, and that was the contingency for that to happen. Um, I, I do have still the constitutionality of giving nonprofits from the city. Um, and I'm not, we, the CBG, does it say that we have to give to nonprofits a certain percent or just up to or not to exceed 15%? And within that, based on the criteria that we were given, it has to be included a nonprofit with a federal 501c3 tax exempt status, um, a government entity or faith based organization directly serve Rocky Mountain neighborhoods or households, and at least three years of experience assisting low and moderate income. To be one of those three. Um, based on the reports that you provided this council and to the State of North Carolina Utilities Commission, um, in three weeks we've had a 193% increase of residents, residents who are eligible to have their electricity disconnected and 125% for small businesses. As we know, the City Council voted not to do that, as well as the Governor's um, uh, order. But Everyone is going to that owes the money will owe the money eventually, whether they get on a payment plan or not. But 
the payment plan, if I recall um, from the governor, would be about eight months, I think. So, so far, late fees have uh, totaled about $33,000. Our past due account has increased to $1.7 million, which is an increase in three weeks of $436,000. Um, we're going to have, we have people who've lost their jobs, we've had businesses that are shuttering. Um, a lot of these have little prospects of paying the money back to the city. Um, it's hard, even as hard as they may want to or work, and at some point this city, this city is going to disconnect utilities. I propose that we take this money that is supposed to go to the CDC and give it to the war program, which could go and help the citizens of Rocky Mountain who can't afford to pay the utility bills and will not have their, and this goes to elderly, the people who've recently lost their jobs, and to um, uh, children, well, and disabled. And I think that will be a good use of this money. I, will, I support that. I second that. I, I will try to um, take, take the issues that you uh, have raised uh, one by one, so forgive me if I don't uh, touch a ball. Um, so this is a community development block grant funding, and there are certain criteria that the HUD uh, federal program sets forth for municipalities such as Rocky Mountain, which is an entitlement city, to follow. And so the criteria here, um, and I think we shared that information with you as well, is criteria that has been um, approved and accepted by HUD as the staff evaluates each of the applications that, that come forward. So there is a process in place where uh, these nonprofits are, um, they go through an application process, the staff evaluates that application, and then we, of course, make the recommendation to you for approval. So to the very right of the table that you have in your packet, it tells you the number of points that were scored for each of the applications. Um, you will note um, that we are recommending $84,144 because that is the 15% of our allocation for CDBG as required by, uh, by HUD. Uh, you will also note that um, the recommended funding certainly in some cases does not come up to the requested funding from, from the agencies as well. So we are adhering to the $84,144. You'll also note um, in the same table that we have been notified because of the uh, pandemic that we will be receiving additional funds through the CARES Act. And so um, you'll see where my sister's house um, will also be receiving um, additional money for that. The CDC, actually, the Rocky Mount uh, CDC that you were referring to is not a part of the CDBG public service funding, but it is being recommended for funding at a later time um, for the CDBG Economic Development um, Program, as well as the uh, UCM Community Shelter. We are funding, recommending to fund the Bassett Center with these uh, funds. In terms of the constitutionality, I would have to ask the uh, city attorney to, to comment on that. Uh -huh. Excuse me for turning my mic to you. Uh, I understand. I think everybody wants to hear you, right? Yeah, that they, uh, that some of the other people cannot hear you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I had heard some rumblings of this uh, earlier. Uh, in order to appropriate it to a nonprofit, which is what you're doing, you have to appropriate for a purpose that's a public purpose. Uh, and there are a number of them listed. That's often that's determined by the legislature and the authorizations that the cities have, and uh, ultimately determined by the courts. The second prong of that is the purpose must be one that the city itself is authorized by law to undertake. A 
number of the, these uh, nonprofits appear to me to be some who undertake activities that the city itself is authorized to undertake. But it may be that some of these uh, organizations undertake activities that the city itself is not authorized to, uh, to undertake. So in order to address that problem, what you have is a contract with the uh, nonprofit to ensure that the funds are used for public purpose and that is a, it is an authorized public purpose that the city itself is authorized to engage in. The contract will need to, be, need to set out what the funds can be used for and require that the nonprofit report back to the city with respect to the expenditures so that the city can ensure that they're being used for public purpose and an authorized public purpose. So, we, we, in my estimation, we have about three issues here on the table. One is some challenges that Councilman Dalchich has with some previous practices. Um, but what we have is a motion on the floor, really, yeah, as it relates to item 13. The question. With the second, so um, I think we could deal with them in a separate matter. So, with that said, so as it relates to the constitutionality, your position or your opinion is that it ties to the public purpose. It is authorized by law to undertake it. Where, where the fact that that's not the case, um, it is resolved via a contract with the entity which is received the grant. That's right. And we, there, there needs to be they need to be safeguards in there. Okay. They need, they need so, so with that said, you know, if, if there's any other discussion relative to that matter, then, then let's have it. Otherwise, you well, know, let's go with that. I do continue the discussion. The way I read it in our packet. First of all, Madam Manager says the City of Rocky Mount CDBG public service allocation for FY 1920 was 84,000. The city has received nine proposals, and it goes on further on and says the total amount CBG funds obligated for public service activities must not exceed 15%. It doesn't say it has to be 15%. It just says it must not exceed 15%. Well, and, that and then and then back to the city attorney. Um, I. Well, I don't know if it's a city attorney or a madam manager, but for the contracts, did we have contracts in previous years? Have we followed up with those contracts? Have they reported? Have we seen um, verified financials that have been audited? And are we are ensuring that the money that the public is spending, have we made sure that it's spent on what the hard-earned taxpayers, whether it's CDBG taxpayers or whether it's North Carolina taxpayers or whether it's Sierra Rock Mountain taxpayers, is it is it being spent as we've requested? Uh, so uh, let me answer your second question first, and yes, because HUD comes in and uh, monitors what the city does, and uh, we are in good standing with, with HUD. While you are correct, it does say up to. However, if you will look at the funding requests that come in to the city to support the nonprofits, it always far exceeds the amount of money that we have available to them. And so that is why we go to the limit, the 15% allocation that we can provide uh, to the requesting agencies. I think um, this year, uh, the total amount of the request was over 200,000. Uh, they were seeking $291,890 in funding. However, we only had, uh, based on the formula before us, up to the 15%, $84,144 to distribute. And so that is why the recommendation is for $84,144. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, related to the issues of constitutionality, I think if that was such an issue, it would be an issue across the country and not isolated in Rocky Mountain. Rocky Mountain is not doing anything differently than any other city in this country. Um, as we're adhering to federal requirements and standards, then there is nothing to discuss. Um, secondly, related to uh, the targeted attack on Rocky Mountain Edge Cone CDC. 
Um, it's interesting that this is the only entity that's being funded that has actually built housing for poor against the CDC. And I'm ready to vote, sir. And can we, we, I will call for the vote. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Aye. One opposite opposed, uh, Councilman Dalton. I have one comment. Allow me. I want to take three minutes. I just want to say I wish we could fund more than 15%. Because when we look at a United Community Ministry that's dealing with homelessness, and we don't know when one of us may end up in that situation. Like my edge on CDC is with housing foreclosures. We never know when we're going to end up in that situation. Boys and Girls Club without you. Ripple effects with women and children in crisis and Bassington as well. I think these are all good organizations. And you all done a great job. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Item 14 is consideration of modified time parking limits. Here are the event centers presented at the Committee of the Hall on April 13, 2020. Um, the recommended action is to adopt the ordinance. Uh, any, do I have a motion? So moved. Moved second. by the joiner, second by uh, Blackwell. Uh, do you have a presentation you'd like to make to us? Any specific questions on this matter that we need to talk about? All right, that being so, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, like sign. Okay, item 15 is consideration of request to apply for the Coronavirus Emergency Supplemental Funding Program, otherwise CESF grant, for $121,771 to be used to purchase personal protective equipment, supplies for cleaning work areas, gloves, masks, and training involved with fit testing of the N95 disposable mask. The recommended action is to authorize staff to submit application on behalf of the city and two, to authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute any required documentations, circuit certification, subsequent grant agreement on behalf of the city. So moved. Moved by uh, Councilor. So moved. Second by uh, Miller. Is there a need for discussion? Please. So, Councilman uh, Bullock? 100% in favor of it. Uh, we have seen on TV and heard um, not enough supplies here, overrun over the next place. Do we have any way that we can have a say or a comment occasion or maybe even a person from our city that might be active in that movement of that? I'll defer to the manager, and you may want to hit the mic so that those who are, are watching can actually hear. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The button. Yeah. I would just like to, to knowing it's a process that no, no one's familiar with it up here. I would just like to see if the city of Rocky Mountain or National Hitchcock County one might possibly have a place on the board or the motion, however this is going to be funded and however we might see our see the results that is supposedly aimed for our town as well as others all over the Yes, yeah, sir. I believe that this is actually to allow our staff to uh, seek grant monies for additional protective equipment, and should there be any other motions there, I, I, I'll defer to the manager, but I believe that um, she would include city council decisions that would, she would fill outside of, of her range. Uh, yes, sir. So these are funds that have already been set aside for the city of Rocky Mount as a result of the um, pandemic. However, we have to go through an application process, and so this authorizes us uh, to submit the application process in order to receive the funds. That's why you... Yes, thank you. Is there additional comment or questions? Being none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. All right, item 16 is consideration of request to apply for Rocky Mountain Community Foundation grant, 
$20,000 to assist with the renovations at Battle Park. Recommended action is to authorize staff to submit an application on behalf of the city to authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute any required documentation, certifications, and subsequent grant agreement on behalf of the city. Second. Moved by Blackwell, second by Joyner. Is there a need for discussion? Being none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. like sign. Okay, item 17 is consideration of bid for design of sidewalk project award to SEPI, Inc. at a total of $143,033.32. The city will be reimbursed 80% by the North Carolina Department of Transportation. The study area includes sections along West Raleigh Boulevard and South Winstead Avenue. The recommended action is to award bid as recommended and authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the contract on behalf of the city. Is there a motion? So moved. moved by Daltridge. Is there a second? Yes, second by Joyner. Is there, for, is there a need for discussion? Councilman Walker? Yeah, he said so. okay. okay. All right. I'm now a second. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Uh, item 18 are the appointments of various uh, openings and vacancies within various committees. Are there any to be brought before this council? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. I've, I've seen it before. I don't see it listed here today, but I think there's an opening for Upper Coastal Plain um, Council of Governments Board. I'd like to nominate Councilman Richard Joyner to serve in that position. Um, sure. Can we table that and confirm that there's an opening and then uh, go down that road? Is there an opening? Uh, my understanding is that there's not, that it's currently being filled by Councilman um, Knight. Oh, yeah, he wants but, to. But I don't, but I don't, I, I don't know. I, mean, I don't know what I don't know. And he, as an alternate, as an alternate. So can we just table it until we know what we know and then bring it up the next week? It's an alternate, so I second that motion. City Clerk just confirmed it. Second the motion. I okay. second the motion. Is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, like sign. Now can we confirm that? <laughs> second the motion. <laughs> I'm on the board. Second the motion. Uh, all <laughs> Welcome to the board. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, all right. Now item 19 takes us to closed session. Second. Right, we're going into for an attorney client privilege matter. Uh, the motion was made by Council Member Joyner and seconded by Council Member Knight, I believe. Is there uh, all in favor? Please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Like aye. All right. Thank you. Mics are live and 